<sighs> well, Eddie, if you're ready, then I'm ready. Let's fucking do this. Rear naked takes back up in this bitch. Ed is mobile. He's on a business trip as we speak. Ed, let us let let the people know why you're on a business trip if you can. <clears throat> How to pick up this bad boy. And new. Congratulations, Ed. Don't get too used to it because I'm coming for it on the, at 270, baby. So all I, I said can, that last time. All I can tell you, all I can <laughs> all I can tell you is just to make sure you keep it clean for me, nice and polished, because I'm just letting you borrow it for right now. Get you a little bit a little bit of fame, a little bit of glitz, a little bit of glamour whatever but yes ed i feel like ed how excited were you to pick this up g were you wearing it the whole way i wore it a little bit on the road yeah ed ed would get off uh to um to buy like some snacks and he was wearing his uh his i um, wore it to the store yeah he was wearing it at the store and shit like that and i feel like people are already gonna try to take it away from ed because ed's on lookout right now He's going to have to display his skills. Um, coming for me. You're coming yeah. for the belt. Yeah, they're coming for that belt, baby. Um, let's see. Uh, channel news. Do we have anything, Ed? I don't uh, think. 270 I, coming up. Yeah, just 270 coming up. Some some vlogs. So, okay. So, I remember the last stream. I said that there was a lot of ideas that I was thinking of, and I pitched them to Ed. Um, and Ed thought they were pretty cool. Uh, so, it's not official but but what we're gonna try to do is while we're waiting in line for um the press conference and the weigh-ins we're gonna interview some of the people that are um waiting to get in like the fans you know because all the news people they always want to interview the fighters they always want to interview like the people you know what i mean to get them their clicks but what about the fans at rear naked takes we're for the fans we're primarily fans. We have no choice. We yeah. have no choice but to be for the fans. Yeah, we're for the <laughs> fans. We're from the fans. We're literally everything from the fans. So I guess, Ed, we can put that on our shoulders. Whatever the MMA community has to say, we can uh, broadcast it and um, show the world. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to interview the, the the people waiting and see what kind of dumb shit they say. Um, I'm going to try to keep it as unfiltered as possible. We're going to also try to not get canceled from it, but I mean, wouldn't be our fault. Um, all righty. So that's that bit. Ed, it's Friday. I had a long day at work. I'm pretty sure you had a pretty long day with, um, hanging out with the homies. <laughs> you watched the Spider-Man movie yesterday. Yes, sir. Spoil it for everybody. Uh, Batman dies. There you go. You heard it there first. Um, rear naked takes. Batman dies. I didn't know Batman was in it. Me, on the other hand, Friday, I got a beer. I still got a whole keg that I need to finish. So this is probably one of many. Hopefully, I can kill it today. I highly doubt though, but I'm gonna do some a couple keg stands, a lot of refills. So cheers to Ed because he can't drink right now. But I mean, he's the he's the under. <laughs> He's the he's the champ right now, so it is what it is. God damn! I was telling Ed before I we started that beer off of a keg is something else. Beer off of a keg is something else. Um, <clears throat> all right, Ed. Um, MMA news. I know there's a little bit. Uh, do you got anything off the top of your head? Um. Yeah, Julian Opinion was on the Ariel Hawani show, She's calling out pretty much Kayla Harrison, and uh, just talking shit about Amanda. Kind of honestly, like she tried to do it humbly, but she was basically saying Kayla Harrison's second fiddle to Amanda, and if she wants it, she can get it. And then uh, or yeah, and then Kayla Harrison was clapping back saying, well, "What the fuck, like." You're nobody. You're still a scrub. You can come get it too. We'll see what's up. So yeah, yeah. Hey, I, Anderson, <laughs> Juliana Pena, maybe. Yeah, I I watched that bit about it as well. I guess like Juliana Pena was just basically saying that Kayla Harrison isn't shit because she's in a, a B level org, so she was fighting nothing yeah. but B level people. 
And Kayla's like, whoa, what the fuck? Like, when the fuck did I ever disrespect you? She And she basically, like, threw it out there. She's all, you know, I'm not in this for the, for the, for the, um, for the show. Like, I'm, I'm legit. Like, if you're going to come and talk that shit, just know that I'm going to come, I'm going to come with that heat too. Like, I, I take this shit serious. And if you, if you want to get some, we can handle it in the ring. We can mitigate all the talking and shit. So she, she called her out, uh, straight up and, uh, Ed, do you like that fight anyways? Uh, it's all right. I mean, I still think Amanda can come back and reclaim her, her title. And then she could probably, it's like Ariel was saying, we, we got a, we got a stint, a stunt to, to the Harrison Nunez fight just because Nunez lost right now. But yeah. uh, once, she, once she go, comes back and if she wins, you know, the hype's going to be there for that fight again. Yeah. Yep. Uh, but, and I, and I remember I told you that in the last show too. I just hope that the fight is won like in a good fashion. You know what I mean? Like she flat lines her in the first round or just, you know, does something spectacular just to reestablish that dominance and be like, you know what? That first, that first one was just a fluke loss. Like I'm here to bring it in. You still ain't shit. Um, me personally, Ed, I don't, I don't like the Juliana fight and uh, Kayla Harrison fight because, ah, uh, I it's because Julie. I mean, they fight at bantamweight, which is one thirty five, and Kayla Harris is fights at one fifty five. So that's like ba- that's basically getting Aldo and um McGregor to fight again. You would have to make um them both uh meet halfway at featherweight, but 45. I feel. Like- I feel like uh, Juliana will be a little slower, and I feel like Kayla Harrison won't be Kayla Harrison, if that makes any sense. So, and if well, I feel like Kay- Kayla's gonna have to fight at forty fives anyways, because there's no fifty five. Yeah, yeah. Well, <clears throat> yeah, and that's true. She said she said that she'd do it, but she obviously doesn't want to because it fucking sucks. But I just feel like if Juliana is a smaller chick. I don't feel like her fighting at forty five is ideal, uh, opposed to. Yeah, I think Juliana would rather go down and yeah. fight at twenty fives than she would go up to forty fives. Right, and and the thing is, is that um, Nunez, well, I mean, she has the belt at forty five. You know what I yep. mean? So she she just has to she has to get a win. Yeah. So she she doesn't. I mean, if she loses to Pena, you could say Nunez could go ahead and fight Kayla still at forty fives. Um, for the belt. But it anyway. it'd be less hype because you know she she yeah. wouldn't be the top anymore. But you you know they'll sell the living shit out of that fight. You know what I mean? They'll let's, still do it. Yeah, they they'll try do. their best too. Yep. Um. Shit. Let's see what else I got. All right. <laughs> so Ed and I have been literally, you know, going through a roller coaster in the past couple um of days because Dustin Poirier was also on the Ariel Hawani show, and Dustin Poirier said, or Ariel Hawani asked Dustin Poirier, "Hey, Dustin, what?" fight excites you what fight makes you get out of the bed what because basically dustin was saying that there's no fight that intrigues him right now and he said the only fight that's in, that intrigues him is nate diaz so shortly after and that after same same day that afternoon i think it was wednesday nate diaz starts throwing shots at poirier saying hey i'm 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 willing to fight fucking next month if you're down this and that and poirier said shit i'll fight you um this year still um and then Nate was just like, now you're full of shit, this and that. He's like, I'm being serious. And and literally everybody went on a Twitter craze, me and Ed included. We were talking about, oh, that'd be badass if it would be Nate versus Dustin on uh, 270, because obviously we're attending that shit. And, you know, we were still hoping and hoping, but then Dustin came out, I think, yesterday and said or today <laughs> and said that the UFC doesn't let him for obvious reasons. I mean, he just got done fighting. Charles Oliveira, so I'm pretty sure they don't want him to fight uh, the next event right away. Um, but Nate Diaz still tweeted out saying that the UFC um, better find him a fight and shit like that because he really wants to fight. Will that happen? I don't know. That was literally all today, so this is literally a, an unfolding story as we speak. For all I know, they already came to him in agreement. You know, they just have to make it official and sign the dot online, whatever. But... Until then, we shall we will not know. Ed, what what do you think about all this madness? And I was I was really excited to see the possibility of Poirier and Diaz, especially at two seventy. That would have been fucking sick. That would have been yeah. That'd but been that. it makes sense. I mean, from a business standpoint, you could really juice that headline itself. So 
you know, the fact that you'd have to throw them into a middle card, it, it still helps sell the 270 card. But I feel like, you know, there's just more money to be made if you if you make it into its own card. Yeah. Um, so I guess, and then also the fact that just Dustin just fought for the belt. And then Nate, I mean, Nate does want to fight. The only thing is I don't I don't see who he's going to fight. He needs a big name or a bigger name or a better contender. Because Hamzat was there, but, you know, he, he reportedly he, he didn't um, accept Hamzat. And then you have other guys trying to step up, and it doesn't make sense. I mean, you know, Nate needs a bigger – uh, a better name, and for the foreseeable future, at least for January, I don't see a big name that comes to mind that he could possibly fight. Of course, McGregor's hurt. He's out till the summer. Nate still has six months left on his contract to to get a fight going. Um, you know, I, I don't know, at the welterweight or lightweight, anybody, I just don't see it. You know, unless Tony Ferguson comes out and wants to fight Nate, that would be fucking insane. <laughs> I'd, I'd be down to watch that. Um, I just don't see it. Like, who's going to fight him? Masvidal again? Okay, maybe. Uh, I haven't seen anything, though. Um, Hamzat's not going to do it. You know, Nate's not going to fight anybody below the top, what, five? Yeah. Or top ten, you know? Yeah, I, I think maybe Vicente Luque, but at the same time, I think he... I don't think Luque would take that fight. I think stylistically... I honestly feel like Tony Ferguson, if you were to, you know, beef up just a little bit, that would be a pretty nice fight to watch. Yeah. Is it going to happen? <clears throat> no, that's probably a big ass stretch. But, you know, that that's the only type of name he's looking for other than, you know, Mazadal. And I don't see anybody else stepping up to the plate. You know, it's only Nate Diaz. It's not like they're fighting Hamzat. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. <clears throat> Did you know that Nate Diaz isn't even on the rankings for Walter Waite? Yeah, yeah, he, he's nowhere to be found right yeah, now. Anywhere. I don't even know. Uh, this guy's like a, a freelancer. He he goes middle, Walter, fucking yeah, free weight. I don't, I don't know, dude. That that'd be. I, you know what? I feel like maybe Sean Brady or Michael Chiesa would be crazy enough to do it. Either I just or. feel like Nate wouldn't even want that. Yeah, and that's what I think Vicky. so too. Sean Brady's on his way up. He might take it with Michael Chiesa, but I don't think Michael Chiesa generates enough noise i mean he does but not like hype you know like not a casual from from the yeah. casual standpoint um yeah dude i mean fuck i don't know i, I i'd be it'd be cool to go to to have him fight but i don't think there's really anybody that he can't fight unless it's tony ferguson i think that'd be pretty cool but i don't yeah. think tony you know maybe tony ferguson would take that fight actually on on, on a late notice i but. feel like tony ferguson's the only guy that would be up for that fight <laughs> however Tony might be looking at, you know, freaking, hold on one second, sorry. Tony might be looking at potential uh, title hopes. Yeah. So. Mm, fuck it. I would say, dude, I'd just say fight for the fans, dude. That'd be fucking a crazy-ass fight to go watch um at 270. But, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, story's still unfolding. We'll see if, if anything comes up. Um, So, let's see. There's, ooh, I'm going to talk about this one. Er, your your boy, um, he finally established Eagle FC. <laughs> Habib, oh, Habib, yeah. So honestly, okay. In all honesty, I think I think he he um he has something, dude, in his hands. Um, I do too. Yeah. Not, I I don't. I wouldn't say it's necessarily because of what he's doing. Because you have PFL, you have one, you have all these other organizations, Bellator. But I just. I think he's the first one to actually implement um, the divisions that we want to see. He has a yeah. 135, 145, 155, 165, which Kevin Lee and Ariel Hawani are calling super lightweight, which I, I like that name. A super, yeah. super lightweight is a cool name. 175, and 175. And that's it, right? Yeah. So typically, Walter Waits 170s, but, you know, yeah. in this case, it's going to be 175s. I think it's cool. I think it has an opportunity to be at the the PFL um, one championship type level. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously it's going to be a grind, but who we'll see who he signs. I mean, Habib's a good, um, you know, from what I heard or what I've seen, Habib's good with talking to people. And then obviously we'll, we'll see what kind of team he's backing. <laughs> um, the only thing is, is Habib going to have ring card girls? <laughs> Habib's going to have women fighters. Who knows? You know, I think those are really big things you got to consider. 
Yeah. Yeah. In terms of a a fighting league. And I I didn't think about it until until literally right now because Habib's not going to fight or make these fights in Dagestan or in Russia. He's bringing them over to the United States and specifically in Florida. I heard his first event is going to be in Florida. So I understand Habib's mentality is very like uh, religious and shit like that. But what he needs, what he needs to understand and comprehend that the ring card girls and all that shit, that's American culture. You know what I mean? Like, look at, look at PFL. Their star is a women fighter. Kayla Harrison. That's their fucking star. Um, Don't they also have Clarissa Shields? On PFL, yeah. Yeah. And uh, although Clarissa Shields, you know, is one and one, she still brought in some attention. (laughs) Yeah. And she's a woman. So their stars are women fighters. Yeah. And Eagle FC, you know, although maybe they don't want to go that route, it could benefit them because people like seeing women fight, dude. I, I personally don't yeah. mind them getting down because they fucking they could fucking de- uh, fight. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. As far as like uh, women fighters go, I believe women's do deserve some that right to fight, and I feel like Habib should implement at least a one twenty five or a one thirty five in there. I mean, not he doesn't need to do the same thing that like everybody else is doing, like five divisions or four divisions, but. He should definitely have at least one to give the, the he, girls an he opportunity. He had a slight call out to Dana. He said, uh, if you don't know, now you know. <laughs> yeah, he so. did. Um, <laughs> shit. Uh, we'll just see what happens. But but yeah, I'm going to be honest, though. He needs ring card girls if he's going to want to make his fights in the U.S. Um, it, it's just like I said, it's a part of American culture, and I'm pretty sure the fans want to see it. Um. You know, you you can have your your own personal thoughts if you think it's right or it's wrong, whatever. I, we don't care. We're just here to talk about it and, and say what we think. But speaking of Eagle FC, do you know that Kevin Lee signed with Eagle FC? Yes, I saw in the Ariel Herwani show uh, a few weeks ago that Kevin Lee was contacted by Eagle FC, and mm-hmm. then he kind of made it seem like ah, uh, you know, if the money's right, apparently the money was right because he mm-hmm. signed. And he's right now their their biggest fighter, um, one of their only few fighters on the roster. But they also signed UFC legend Rashad Evans. Oh no was, shit! Uh, yeah, Rashad oh, Evans is that. on Eagle FC. That's so it's pretty crazy. Um, they have they look like they have an all right roster, but uh, Kevin Lee is going to be the forefront. And I mean, good for him. You know, he he was mm-hmm. uh on his way to be a contender in the UFC, and the <laughs> way he said it, he took big fights too early because they they had a lot of pressure on him which makes sense. Um, and, you know, it didn't work out in the end. The UFC kind of did him dirty in the sense that they didn't even call him to fucking tell him he was being let go. They kind of just sent him an email. So that yeah, was kind of fucked up. But but we'll, we'll see what he does. You know, he's going to fight in the 165ers. Uh, so that's going to be pretty exciting to watch. <laughs> yeah, the, the thing is, um, Kevin Lee, he, he is for sure the, the forefront of um, Eagle FC for sure. Um, but he's still in his prime, dude. That's what people yeah. want to, like, People forget. People think he's washed. Dude, he's I think he's what like thirty one or thirty two. You know what I mean? Like he still yeah, I think has he's it. Barely pushing thirty. Yeah, he still has it in him. And and anybody that that wants to discredit that, well, then literally we just had a fight at two sixty nine from people who started off bad. You know what I mean? Oliveira. What what was his record before twenty seventeen? Ten and, and eight. And then after twenty seventeen, yep. he was fucking. He's eight and zero, oh, ten and zero, oh, or whatever his record. Had. Yep. And same thing with Poirier. He did. He suffered a, a featherweight, and he flipped it around, and he fucking became a top contender in the lightweight division. Like it could happen, and especially in that at that age that he's at, you know, it could happen. Like it, it just really depends where Kevin Lee's mind's at. I usually, um, whenever someone is already at a high stature and already has it all, and then they fall off from that, they, you don't, they usually don't come back. But Kevin Lee, on the other hand, he never made it to the top. His hardest- I think for Dustin. Uh, going back to Dustin, I think, uh, you know, when it's all said and done, you can make the case he was one of the best fighters that we've ever seen. Um, yeah, and, you know, he ne- he was never an undisputed champ, but he still fought and beat the best, the best contenders, you know, in his division. And he's fought him multiple times. He was never he's never backed down from a fight. He's put on great knockouts. He's put on great fucking fights. Uh, the Dan Hooker fight, that shit was insane. Um, you know, knocked out McGregor, uh, you know, went, went all five with Max Holloway, beat him, knocked out Gagey. Um, yeah, dude. I mean, freaking Dustin Poirier 
one of the best fighters of our time, you know, that we've seen. Yeah. So I feel like people have no no reason to discredit him. Um, this is just there's no reason to. He's a great fighter, We're witnessing greatness. Yeah. And it's just hard, dude. <laughs> Lightweight's one of the most competitive divisions in the fucking in the world right now and I mean we're we're seeing it firsthand. Yeah. And also to tag a little bit off of uh, Poirier and what his situation is, he did say on Ariel Hawani show that he doesn't know if he'll ever make that cut to 155 again. Uh, to be fair, dude, I think D- Dustin's walk around weight is 186. Yeah, he he's a little heavier. Yeah, and 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 to take into perspective, Colby Covington's walk around weight is 184. So t- right. <laughs> he's a uh, he's a very big lightweight guy. Um, and what what's what's fa- what's pretty cool was that. Habib said, like they asked him about Dustin, what he thought, and all Habib said is like, "Hey, call me Dustin." He's all, "I, I can, I can get you, I can get you situated." Over here. Yeah, yeah. Fuck, man, I honestly believe, dude, that's what's gonna really make Eagle FC, um, go to the top. I think that that was good that Habib, you know, let him know he gave him that option. But I think for Dustin right now, he's already in a position where he doesn't need the money. You know, he he just needs to fight to be the best. Yeah. And that's what he wants to do. He's going to want to fight the best fighters. So, uh, you know, Ego SC for him, yeah. it's, I don't think he's going to go there. Yeah, but, you know, it's still kind of cool that Habib's reaching out to yeah. every and all fighters. Yep. Um, shit, there, there's another controversial topic that I wanted to cover. Do you have any more uh, things that uh, on your plate? Nope. Yeah, there's, there's another one that I wanted to um, cover. So... Your boy John Jones, uh, he had his charges dismissed. Dismissed. I know you and I had a little bit of uh, back and forth apart as like what really happened, but uh, I don't want to go into details and shit. But all I know is that John Jones, um, his charges were dismissed. From what I know, that usually oh, and he got a plea deal. So from what I know yeah. is that he, um, his lawyers, he lawyered up pretty good. His lawyers uh, came to an agreement with the judge. The judge said, all right, you can do this, take this, do this, and you'll be fine. We'll clear off this felony from your record. And boom. So uh, it well, literally sad, goes... sad to say, like, John Joe is not, not a stranger to this position, dude. Yeah. He's not. This isn't the worst he's done. Um, so, you know, love it's or a... hate the guy, he, he's been here before. He, you know, he's he's gone around the system. I, I don't know what it is, you know. Mm-hmm. I don't think I, I truly don't think he's a bad person. I just think he fucks up a lot. He yeah. does fuck up a lot. So hopefully he can learn. Yeah, that's, that's all I gotta say. Yeah, I, I feel like from a fighter standpoint, I, I'll always respect and really cherish what John Jones has done and what he's proved to people. But I, I mean, I guess this is where I go against what you're what you say. But I, dude, as like a human, it's like. I'm gonna be very yeah. blunt. It's just like, dude, like you know, you're kind of low key a piece of shit if you're if all of these allegations that you're having is legit. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you're kind of a piece of shit in my opinion. But aside from that, you know, I I don't give a shit. Like that's something else. We're talking about MMA and fighting and what he's done and as for the sport, like he he's he's one of the greatest, if not the greatest fighter, MMA mixed martial arts fighter of all time so i mean it's it it sucks because there's two conflicting things you know you have reality and you have the sport when you conflict both of them on my end it just sucks seeing that you know what i mean like as much of a heart as i want to have for him it just i I can't get over the fact that he's already he's already fucked up too many times yeah it it just sucks man but from from the fan perspective from from the mma perspective i just really hope you know, it goes good for him, which I mean, hey, a plea deal is in the a step in the right direction, right? So as long as he doesn't get all this shit on his record and he doesn't have to face a twenty five to life, then he then he's fine. A, a plea deal, he he should get off pretty easy. Maybe he he won't fight until. And if he comes back, he better fucking win. Oh yeah. If he doesn't win, he's gonna be in for a fucking shit ton of hate. Yeah, and, and he, the, he's, he already deserves all the hate he gets. But if he doesn't fucking win. It's going to hurt him. Yeah, and it just sucks, dude, because what that the last time he kind of quote unquote uh, came back, was it off of surgery or was it off of uh, the same shit? Like him just being in trouble with the law. Like whenever he came out to um, I'm, the I'm Coming Home song. You remember this? Um, yeah, I think that was what, 2017, 2018? I'm sure. That's when he was out for like a couple years. I think it was for this kind of drama. 
Yeah, man. It, it wasn't. It was a combination of things. It was. It was you know testing positive for drugs. It was you know some shit he had going on at camp. It was a lot of shit, and it was just a combination of it. Um, How was his performance that night? Mm. Well, I know he won, but like, what in what fashion? Who did he fight? Was it Anthony Smith? <clears throat> Maybe. Uh, let me see. It was. I think it was. It was. It was. Oh, it was Ovin St. Pro. Um, I don't remember that fight too much. He did win. It was by decision. He didn't knock anybody out, though. Yeah. See, that that makes it even harder to kind of, like, really understand what what type of energy he's going to bring. Because, like, if he were to dominate in that fashion, then obviously he's ready. He's, he, he hasn't fight. knocked somebody out in a long time. I, I can say that. So then he's a really uh, good technical fighter, right? Yeah, that, he's always been that. He, he just hasn't finished people in a long time. And a lot of people have criticized him for that. But, you know, but I will say this. His last fight against Dominic Reyes, to me, was too close. And I will give him the edge now because Dominic Reyes lost to Blahovich, uh, got knocked out, and then got knocked out by, um, Yuri. by Yuri. Yeah. So I will say this. Maybe, you know, Jones just didn't, didn't have it all that night. But still, all in all, you know, it was a little too close. I mean, his last one, two, three, his last three fights were by decision. Um, he did knock out Gustafson in their <laughs> second matchup. He knocked out Cormier, although that Cormier one was ruled no contest because he tested positive for um, all that drugs and shit. Yeah, and then, I, and then you know, following that, it's just a bunch <laughs> of decision wins, so. Yeah. I mean, even Engano called him out on that. Engano said, hey, you're not a finisher, you know. We've yeah. seen it. But I give two shits less about what Engano has to say. I mean, don't get me wrong. Engano's a fucking force. I respect him. But, you know, to go in the ring toe-to-toe with John Jones, you know, and just. Oh, you got to be put, ready. Put, yeah, put on the resume that he's put on. You can't use an excuse that he don't finish people because we've seen him. We saw Engano fight Lewis, and he did fucking virtually nothing, so. Yeah. But we'll, yep. we'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll definitely see what happens. Um, all right, so the last piece of MMA news, which is not even MMA related, it's boxing related, and you probably know where this is going. Let's just get this shit over with. Paul, uh, Jake Paul, and Tyrone Woodley. Where do you stand? Who do you got? What do you think? I think uh, if <clears throat> if Woodley wins, we take a shot this time. Last time, it's if Woodley lost, we take a shot. Yeah. This time, if Woodley wins, we take a shot. Okay. Let's do that. Yeah, I, I I'm I agree with that one. If Woodley fucking <laughs> wins, we take a shot. Yeah. Uh, he's the underdog. Um. Shit, dude, I just I just don't really know this time around. I thought last time Jake Paul was gonna get starch. He didn't. I feel like Jake Paul proved a lot to the world. But he did, he did look very wobbly and there was a lot of what if moments, which I feel like Tyrone Woodley could capitalize on, but at the same time, I do not know. Woodley is probably gonna take this as a payday. I honestly <sighs> Woodley to me, this whole fight favors Woodley so much. And the reason why is because Jake Paul was, you know, practicing for somebody else. He was training for Tommy Fury. Woodley, his whole time, he had his eyes set on Paul the whole time. And then now, you know, that Jake Paul takes his fight short notice. Jake Paul has nothing to win. Yeah. He's already beaten him. Woodley has everything to win. If Woodley wins, you know, you know, he he freaking he kind of makes up for the last one. He he finishes uh Paul's uh, undefeated streak. And not only that, you know, maybe he he saves his legacy in terms of uh, combat sports. Yeah. Um, if Paul wins, yeah. you know, Woodley's, you know, he's not going to be taken serious as a boxer ever, uh, you know. But a uh, loss hurts Jake Paul much more than it does Woodley. Yeah. And that's because Woodley already has an established legacy in MMA. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, the, the, the crazy part is, like, Woodley, I mean, Jake Paul's really looking for this finish, like a knockout. But even if... Uh, Jake Paul were to get this as a split decision and even more so a unanimous decision, he's he's definitely he's not gonna get you know it's, he won, but the thing like the thing is is that um Woodley he needs a finish bro he needs a finish to yeah. to establish again his dominance and make it and be like dude I'm here like I'm I'm still the real deal, 
if Woodley goes out there and he gets a, a unanimous or even a, I'm for, for sure a fucking a split, like either of those, I feel like you could still discredit him and be like, bro, like, you know what I mean? Like, you should have done more. You That's really why that, I, that went back. I do have more respect for Jake Paulo for taking this fight because he didn't have to. He literally didn't fucking have to. Yeah, he didn't have to. And and nothing, there was nothing that was going to favor him in this fight in terms of, uh, you know, like the outcome. Yeah. But the fact the <laughs> fact that he did and the fact that he was like, you know what, I'm a fucking boxer. I, I, I'll beat anybody. I, I respect him for that. Yeah, but we'll I, see. And that was another topic that I wanted to cover is like, dude, you can say what you want about Jake Paul now, but he, he's low-key gaining the respect of a lot of people like media and some, even some like MMA and boxing heads. Like, dude. Yeah. Like, dude, say what you want about uh, who he's fought or whatever. And but he, he's 6-0, and oh, right? Is it 6-0 is it yeah. or is he 5-0? Oh? Um, I think he's 5-0. and oh. He beat he beat Nate Robinson. He beat Tyrone Woodley. He beat, um, I think he's like 4-0, oh, actually. Yeah. Paul Record. I think, yeah, he probably is 4-0. Oh. Um, might be good. About 4. Yeah, so... <clears throat> Yeah, so he he's four and oh. Yeah, I mean, dude, and people always like obviously like his first one is Nate Robinson, then Ben Askren, like whatever. You can talk as much shit as you want, but I don't know, dude. The fact that he lasted those rounds and still won a split decision with Tyrone Woodley, I feel like speaks volume. Um, can I just I hate to admit it, but low key he's gaining my respect. Especially if he wins again and actually like case close type of shit. I, I feel like I might start hopping on his bandwagon and see how far he gets. Because at this point, it's like, bro, like, I feel like I'm not going to say it's safe to say, but I feel like you could make the argument that he's the real deal. Right. Because, you know what I mean? But again, like, we'll just have to see how this unfolds. If that happens tomorrow, guys. If you have nothing to do after the UFC Vegas with uh, Lewis and um, Docus, you just watch that shit. Speaking of all that, um. We'll transition into, into that. It. Yeah, let's get into that shit right now. I don't know if I don't know if you still wanted to uh, say anything about it. So, nah. All right, so let's get into the main card, guys, which you've all been waiting for. Oh, this is not the main card. I was looking at some ranking. Um, let's... Lewis versus Dacus. Uh, it is a fight night, guys. Like, I most likely me Ed and I don't really know too much about all these fighters. Uh, there's a few. Actually, we've seen a couple of these guys. Yeah, never mind. Yeah, it's crazy because a lot of these names are starting to become more and more. Yeah, the more the more we've been keeping up with these cards, the more uh, familiar. Yeah, yeah. We're, the more familiar these these guys are. So, so the opening fight on the main card is Cub Swanson and Darren Elkins. <laughs> oh man, the damage, the boy, Darren Elkins, dude. I, I... dude, Cub Swanson is a fucking dog, man, but. And Darren Elkins, like, uh, dude, we saw Darren Elkins last fight against Derek Minner. Fucking gnarly. And he, you know, this boy has a fucking, he has dog in him too. Yeah. And as much as, you know, as much as the reputation that surrounds Cub Swanson, and if we're being real, Cub Swanson in, in the late has been, um, he, I mean, he, he's washed, you know, he's been looking washed. Yeah. He, he's taking a lot of <laughs> big losses. Giga, I mean, Giga's a fucking monster, but Giga just fucking outright fucked him up. Terrible. Uh, you know, I I feel like when when Swanson were to fight like you know decent fighters, he's just not he's not going to be there. And I think Darren Elkins has that has that heart, has that fight in him. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I mean he's he's a good ass fighter, dude. He's tough. Yeah. Um, he's probably the modern day Cub Swanson. Ah, fuck, man. I I just I really don't fucking know. I think I'm going underdog right here, dude. I'm, be, I'm going underdog. I'm going Darren Elkins. Yeah, I think I'm going to go Cub Swanson, dude, if I'm being honest. I just I just feel like Cub Swanson, like, just who he fought last, like, he uh, he fought someone very tough. And I'm not saying that Darren Elkins isn't tough, but I feel like if he fights the wrong opponent, then he won't get... Um, yeah, but Swanson got knocked out in a minute, dude. Yeah, fucking nuts. Okay, so man. That, Whatever. We'll, we'll just we'll just gamble that one out. I got Cub Swanson. You got Darren Elkins. I got Cub Swanson for decision. Fuck it. Darren Elkins knockout round two. <laughs> Shit, he could finish people. I mean, he could have the damage. Darren the damage Elkins. Yeah. All right, Diego Ferreira versus 
Matsu uh, Gamra. Let's see. Uh, I was looking at this guy's record. This Matsu guy, he looks pretty hot, man. He, he's yeah. on a little run. Um, yeah, I'm going to take him. Same here. Yeah. Yeah, he has 19 and 1 with one known contest, and Diego Ferra, 17 and 4. He's coming off a loss, and um, Matsu's, he's coming off a win. So if you're 19 and 1 and coming off a win, I. I think you're pre- you're probably on a good streak or something. So yep, I'm gonna go him decision. Let's do it. Yeah, I'm gonna do decision too. And what I'm gonna do is Amanda Limos. I'm gonna go her. Um, she just looks like she's on we, a better. We still, run we still too. got we still got the Raphael and Ricky Simone fight. Oh, Ricky Simon, yeah. That one I'm going Ricky Simon. Same here. I feel like Ricky Simone. He he's on his way up as well. Raphael is coming off a loss. Um, I, I like I said, I don't know too much about Raphael, but I feel like I've yeah, heard Ricky's name Cody around last year. I've that's, heard that's Ricky's a, name that's around. his last fight. Yeah, I'm gonna have Ricky probably knock out round one. I got fuck, dude. I keep doing all these uh decisions, but it's it's only because I I don't know of any of these fighters and shit. So I'm kind of playing it safe, but we'll see how it goes. Um, all right. So Amanda Lemos versus Angela Hill. Ah. Uh, Oh, dude, I've seen Amanda fight, too. Who was her last fight? Uh, she fought um, Tisha Torres, and Tisha Torres dominated her on the ground. So I'm going to Amanda Lemos, submission, round two. No, yes, uh, uh, Angela Hill, but I'm, I'm, I'm talking about Amanda Lemos. What was her last fight? I don't know, but I think she won by knockout. I've seen her fight, man. I, I know I've seen her fight somewhere. Uh, Montserrat Reese? I don't know who it is. Oh, she's a one of those Mexican fighter chicks. Ah, fuck, man. Um, let's see. I think I'm gonna go with Angela Hill, man. I, yeah. I feel like there's just something about her that I feel like she she might take. I'm gonna go with Angela Hill. Let's do this. This one right here. All right, here we go. <laughs> the two fights that I feel like people give mo- uh, more like- fucks about. I feel like the odds should be a little bit more even. What's the odds on that? <sighs> Steven Thompson's a minus 220 favorite. Below Muhammad's a plus 180 underdog. I think it's only like that because of the rankings, but just based on Steven Thompson's last performance, getting dominated on the ground, and Below Muhammad's, you know, more all-around game, I feel like the, the odds should be a little bit more even. However... I don't know. I I'm I think I'm gonna edge Stephen Thompson, just because yeah. you know he he's such a good striker, dude. Even against Burns, he showed flashes of the kind of striking he could have. Yep. Um, regardless of Burns, you know, took him down. It, it the the thing that sucks is it's giving me Darren Till, <laughs> Derek Brunson vibes. And yeah. the reason I say that is because Darren Till, I had him winning in the stand up, and I was like, it's gonna take Brunson to keep him down there to win the fight. What did Brunson do? Kept him down there on the fight. Balil Muhammad is going to do the same thing. I honestly can see it happening, but I don't want to root against uh, Stephen Thompson because I know his striking is pretty crazy. Yeah. I think I'm just going to go Stephen Thompson decision, dude. That's going to be a tough one for me. Um, Yeah, I think it's tough for me as well. But the thing is, is like Balil Muhammad, he's going to go for those takedowns. I feel like he, he, I feel like Balil Muhammad thinks that he could match the takedown. Um, offense of uh gilbert burns but i feel like in this case i don't think balil muhammad has fought anybody like stephen thompson like this is gonna be i feel like this is gonna be balil muhammad's real first test his real first test was against leon edwards but leon edwards poked the shit out of his eyes and oh i remember that he couldn't continue so i think this is his first fight back no it's not no it's not i think it is no, it's not, because his last fight was a win. I, I forgot against who. I'm not going to say it's a scrub, but it's definitely not someone inside of the top 10. Uh, oh, Damian Maya. Oh, yeah. Damian Maya. This was on, um, I believe, Figueredo Moreno 2. Yes, yes, I think you're right. I feel like that, that kind of rings a bell. Let me see. And, and... Dude, I think he did that to Damian Maya. I want to say. Yeah, you were right. Yeah, it's it was on UFC 263 against Damian Maya, and then I think they went all the way. So, hey, but shout out to Balil Muhammad, Muhammad, man, that guy's a fucking clown. If you guys have Twitter, go give him a follow. That guy's a fucking clown, man. He's hilarious, and even in general, I think he's a fucking nut. So, 
Guy's funny as hell, but he dominated Maya. But then again, Maya's kind of like he's on the back end of his career hard, dude. Yeah. And and you could you could say Thompson is, but if you've watched Thompson, he's really not, dude. Like he's still explosive. He still has his kicks. He still has hands. Um, yep. I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna stick with Stephen Thompson, man. It, it's gonna be, these last two fights, dude. I wouldn't bet on them. They're, they're kind of tough. Ah, I, this last one, Derek. So you, who are you going? Who are you going? I, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be straight the fuck up, dude. And like you know, even even off the back end of two two fifty five. If you haven't watched the 255 vlog with Ed and I, go watch it right now. You get the reactions of Derek um, Lewis and Serial Gone. Anyways, I'm going to continue with what I said that that night, Ed. I, I feel like anytime I go against Derek Lewis, he ends up bringing it. and he. No, no, no. I didn't get your pick for Thompson Belil. Oh, sorry. I got a Thompson. Okay. Decision? Yes. Or knockout? No, I got okay. knockout round three. Okay. Um. All right, so anyways, basically go, going off of what I was just saying, Derek Lewis, in my opinion, guys, I feel like he still has it in him. He does, man. I think he does, but the thing is, like, dude, he literally fought, like, honestly, in my opinion, the best-looking heavyweight that we've ever seen. His it's fucking the weirdest, the weirdest movement, fighting heavyweight. It, it's, like, it's like get someone in the bantamweight or the featherweight division and, like, beef them up, and he has the same hand movement, head movement, Leg movement, like I, and that's, dude, that's what got him that win. Just get this though, get this. I, I completely agree with you, but get this. Chris Dawkins, his last four fights, four knockouts, three of them in the first round. His his last one was in the second round. Hmm. So this is what this tells me: he's gonna stand up with Derek Lewis. Yeah. So one the this this fight's not going five. Is is it a five or a three? It's a it's a five. It's not gonna it's go not, five. It's not fuck no, it's not going five. God, if they you wanna take the under, take the fucking under. Yeah. I they should have put this one as a co main because I feel like Steven and Belil have more more to show in a five rounder than, than these. I guys think do. the Steven Thompson Belil Muhammad was booked later. That's why yeah. that one got booked a little bit more recently. Yeah, I, Ed, I, I see the case that you're making, but it just sucks, man. Because every I don't know yeah. time I go uh, against against Derek Lewis, he fucking wins, man. And I just I want to believe this hype train, and I feel like I'm gonna put all my chips again on the hype train. But this is it, Derek Lewis. If you don't make this win, man, I'm not going for you ever again. You you need to very. So you're taking Lewis. Lewis? Yeah, I'm gonna have to take Lewis on this. Fuck, dude. I honestly do not like. I I think Lewis still has it. He still has the hands, but fuck, Chris Dawkins is fucking he's hot. He's a beast. Yeah, he's a. But fucking if you monster. if you were to you know if you were to just take away the last fight Lewis had, Lewis was on a fucking run too, yeah, man. He was, I he mean, was on a tear. He knocked out cold Curtis Blades with a shot to the chest. Knocked out Olenek. You know, ah oh, man. Hey, and Derek Lewis is my fucking boy. The title of this fucking stream is my balls are, are our balls are hot. And then trust me, my balls are hot as fuck. Right? Yeah, I'm going, you know what? I think, I think Derek Lewis is going to slow down this hype train. Um, this fight's not going the distance. I can see it going three at most. At most. That's mm -hmm. even a stretch in my book. Uh, yeah. I think I'm going to go Derek Lewis, knockout, <laughs> round two, baby. Yeah, that's, just, that's exactly the same thing that I got too. So fuck it. There, there's our picks, guys. Um, fuck that. That's gonna be a pretty. Be that's gonna. That might be a banger of a fight. Yeah, I feel it, like it, not because. Up. Yeah, it's not gonna be the whole fight's gonna be a banger, but the fucking 20, 20 seconds that they start going off on each other, that shit's gonna be on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. There's, there's gonna be a highlight reel for sure, and I just hope to God it's not Derek Lewis getting fucking knocked out cold. Um. Uh, fuck it, but I mean, if it ha it it can happen. Uh, let's see. Um, shit, Ed. Uh, what? We didn't even go over our rear naked pick. Do you have one in mind? I, I... I'll I'll go Lemos versus um versus uh Hill. I think Lemos is gonna go for a rear naked choke. <laughs> I'm just gonna do be silly on this one. I. <laughs> Let's. I got Derek Lewis over your naked choke. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. 
Holy You're shit. Attempt the rear naked. Dude, if I were to put a dollar on that bet, like on something like that, I'd probably get back like fucking. Dude, imagine him on your shit. back though. I know. Yeah, I, I mean, could, I mean, I, I don't. I could see Lewis hurting Dacus and maybe getting him in a bad spot. I, I really can. Um, yeah. Derek Lewis is a fucking beast, guys. Chris Dacus, don't get me wrong, he's a fucking monster <sighs> too. This guy's hot. He just fought recently. Um. At 266, I want to say. Yeah, it was 266. Had a nice knockout in the second round. But Derek Lewis, dude, like, come on. Like, this this guy's a fucking – he's an animal, dude. He beat Ngannou. Um, you know, he, he knocked out Curtis Blades out cold with the uppercut. This oh. guy has the power. You know, he takes his fights very serious. So, yeah. Yeah, we'll just see what happens. Uh, Ed, is there anything else you got for the fans? Um, I, I'm, I, don't got, I don't got shit. Oh, yeah, Justin Taffa in the prelims. Uh, first heavyweight in UFC history to not make weight. That was pretty fucking oh. weird. Yeah. He weighed in at 267. I think the weight limit is 265, I want to say. Um, Justin Taffa, that's crazy. You said? Yeah, Justin Taffa. Huh. He was an up-and-coming fighter, but, you know, his recent stretch, he has not done good at all. That's weird. Yeah, you don't see that often. That's, that is weird. <laughs> he doesn't look like he's out of shape either. No. He kind of, he, he looks like he's built like, Tai Tuivasa, he's just probably a little bit taller. But are the boy, oh yeah, one of the boys, Gerald Mearshart, is fighting on the feature prelim of the night. Uh, Gerald Mearshart, I think he got us our uh, one of our first couple rear naked chokes. So keep a lookout for that guy, Gerald Mearshart, featured prelim of the night. He he might get another rear naked. It's not gonna might might not count as my rear naked pick of the night because it's not on the main card. But you know this guy has seventy six percent submission wins. Keep a lookout for this guy. Uh, hold up. I need to do some fact checking real quick on Gerald Mearshart. I don't want to burst your bubble, but yeah, he got knocked out cold by Hamza Chemaev. But since then, respectfully, he's uh, on a two two fight skid, not skid, on a two fight win streak. So yeah, his last fight, he, yeah, um, rear naked choke. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That rear naked win. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that was nice. that was upon our our first few episodes so i think we shouted him out on the on the page yeah uh yeah i was back but, in i mean hamza who's hamza not gonna fuck up to be honest <laughs> that's true that is very true well ed on, if you don't got anything else i think i'm just about wrapped up um yeah all righty guys well uh yeah just uh tune in to ufc vegas 40 fucking five Ed holding up the belt over there, respectfully, well deserved, buddy. Um, again, I'll be looking uh, to get that shit back on two seventy, which again will be a fucking banger. It should be fun. Again, guys, if you guys haven't watched our vlog for UFC two um two sixty eight, make sure to go check that out. Uh, I recently uploaded a short. I think I'm gonna start uploading more shorts. Uh, I think we we're about to hit three hundred views on the short that I that I uploaded, so it gets us very good publicity on YouTube. So yeah, guys. Um, just just keep a lookout for us. We're, we're definitely bringing some content. We're bringing you know fights, all that great shit, some coverage. Uh, quick shout out to to uh, our local events in the five five nine to or today actually as we speak, uh, they're holding a five five nine um event. And I also want to give a special shout out to Joe Soto, uh, former UFC fighter. He went to fight uh, T.J. Dillashaw. Fortunately, fortunately he lost, but the fact that he's from my hometown. And he went on to fight probably one of the best bantamweights um, in the UFC ever. probably ever. I feel like yeah. there's a lot of respect that 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 he needs right then and there. Uh, Joe Soto recently opened up his gym, or I don't know if he recently did, but he has a gym here locally in town, and he has three fighters fighting tonight. So I'll be definitely checking up on that shit after the five five nine fights has ended. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to them and the five five nine and everybody that's local out here. Yeah, man. I mean fighting's everywhere local not local what it's fighting's uh in everyone's blood so as long as as long as we're able to uh support our locals and trying to boost what we have out here i feel like um it gives us uh serves a good service for uh, everybody out here so yeah we will see you guys uh in the post show on tuesday and hopefully uh fucking lewis gets this knockout but if he doesn't it is what it is Remember, guys, check us out on YouTube, Twitch. You already know the deal. This is Ed and Gonzo, and we will see you guys on the next one. (laughs) Laters, homie.